So hi all, thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Philip Almeida. I have been working for Skype for about five years now. Uh, I started as a front-end developer and now I am on the SRE uh, career path. And I'm here today to present you the PAD recipe for IOPS. PAD stands for Prometheus Anomaly Detector. It can be tagged as a predictive analytic tool uh, that works on top of Prometheus queries and metrics. It can also be easily integrated into any running Prometheus instance with no disruption. Uh, I hope that at the end of this lightning talk, uh, you will be able to identify where PET can help you boosting and getting an edge from your monitoring platform. So for our secret uh, recipe, we need some ingredients. We start with Prometheus, the foundation. On top of it, we'll use PED. PED will bring profit, which is a set of tools to forecast time series data. We will then use Grafana to visualize this data. And optionally, we can also use MLflow to track the model's historical data, okay? And this is the, the, are the ingredients for our secret recipe. So, uh, <laughs> We start with uh, a simple Prometheus query. In this case, load one metric, the load on the last minute. And this is what uh, currently uh, most of the DevOps teams have, which is a fixed threshold that you see on the right side, 1.5. There was an induced load of about 10 minutes uh, where there was a peak and that peak triggered an alert when the actual reading raised above the fixed threshold, okay? And we'll stop alerting once it gets below that threshold. This is what we have now. So uh, by applying our recipe using the gold sickle uh, that you can only find in Lutetia <laughs> if you read it, <laughs> uh, we will focus on three main properties. The Prometheus query, uh, which is the load one, as I said, a simple one for a glass RFS, in this case for a single host, the retraining interval, and what we call the training window, which is the historical data to be accounted for, okay? And this is, will be a good starting point for you to start playing with PED. Uh, you will only need to tweak these three properties, okay? So after applying this recipe, we will move from a fixed threshold to a dynamic threshold, okay? We will move from a metric to a trend. And this is where PET really shows its strength, okay? As you see from the, the lower graphic, PET will give you a top boundary, a lower boundary, and an actual reading, uh, sorry, a predicted reading, okay? Your anomalies will then be triggered once the actual reading exceeds or goes below these boundaries, the top and, and the lower ones. So you can, you can see by the top graphic that the anomaly was triggered once the peak was reached, okay? And then it took about 20 minutes to the model to retrain itself. And keep in mind now that we have a retraining interval of 10 minutes to cope again and to accommodate the new trend, okay? Uh, by tweaking this retraining, inter this retraining interval, you could adjust the flexibility of the system to be more reactive or less reactive, okay? So after the pad is activated, what you have is a self-learning monitoring tool capable of adjusting itself to new trends without human intervention. And this is where pad really gives us the, the boost we need in our monitoring platform to move from a fixed threshold to dynamic threshold and to move into IEOPS in an easy, easy way, okay? Uh, I will show you next a slideshow of the MLflow training model, where you can track your model historical data. This graphic interface will help you to go further deep into the, the training models, uh, but it's not mandatory, it's optional, but it comes out of the box with PAD, okay? Uh, once you have access to this presentation, you can 
uh, check the, the resource links, uh, pay attention to the GitHub where you've got all the code and you can, can start from there. You can check out and do it on your platform. Um, and that's it. Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy it and hope you see you next time.